The Option Strangle, a cheaper alternative to the straddle. The Option Strangle relies on three important prerequisites. One, that the investor has no particular opinion as to the short-term future direction of the underlying stock or other financial instrument, and, two, that the future short-term direction of the underlying stock is expected to be volatile. That is, it is anticipated that it will move strongly in one direction, before the options expire. 3. That the options you are considering purchasing, are relatively cheap. The first two of these three criteria, are absolutely essential for an option strangle trade to be successful. The third criteria is almost as important. You purchase an equal number of call and put options, usually with an expiration date of at least three months out. You want to give yourself plenty of time to be right. It also needs to be carefully analyzed before execution, because if your positions are too expensive, due to inflated implied volatility in the option prices, you don't stand much chance of making a profit, unless the price movement in the underlying is very large. The feature that distinguishes the option strangle from the straddle, is that, unlike the straddle, where call and put options are purchased, at the money, a strangle position is defined by all purchased options being, out of the money. This is why a strangle is usually somewhat cheaper than the straddle. Out of the money options have no intrinsic value, only time value. Purchasing longer dated out of the money options will have more time value, than near month options, and therefore be more expensive, but the reduced risk from slower time decay is worth it. Let's illustrate an option strangle with a practical example. Our stock is currently trading at $35, and we believe that, within the current, or next month. All the signs point to a large move, of at least $5 in either direction. So here's what we do. Buy 10 call option contracts, with an exercise price of $37.50. Buy 10 put option contracts, with an exercise price of $32.50. Both these strike, or exercise, prices, are $2.50 out of the money. Within a month, the stock price falls to $30. The put options are now $2.50 in the money, plus their remaining time value, so they have become quite valuable, so much so, that their current value is worth more, than the combined cost of the original out of the money call and put options, and then some. For the technically minded, this is due to the increasing delta, as the options on one side of the trade, become deeper in the money, plus increased implied volatility. So you close out both the positions for a nice profit. If some really bad news came out, and the share price plummeted to $20, you would make even more profit, from the put options. Theoretically, on the call option side, your potential profits are unlimited. On the put option side, the most a stock price can fall to is zero, so that places some limit on potential profits, but if the fall is from $35, that's still a huge profit. The final, but no less important, issue to consider when deciding on an option strangle strategy, is the implied volatility in the price of the out-of-the-money options, at the time you place the trade. You need to compare the implied volatility in the options, with the historical volatility of the underlying stock, and ensure, that the implied volatility, expressed as a percentage, is less than, or equal to, the historical volatility of the stock. In other words, make sure the options are not overpriced. Often in periods when a stock's price volatility is low, before a price breakout, the option prices will also become quite cheap. This is an ideal opportunity for a strangle trade. Once the underlying stock price becomes more volatile, the options prices will also reflect that volatility, and increase in price at a greater rate, than if you had bought them after the price breakout. Checklist for finding option strangle candidates. Here is a summary of the conditions you should expect to identify, before you consider placing a strangle trade. 1. Earnings reports. Assuming the absence of other news events, options implied volatility should be lower, in between company earnings reports. If you're scanning the market for strangle trade opportunities, you should begin your search by looking at stocks with upcoming earnings reports during the next fortnight. 2. Look at stock charts of the underlying financial instrument. When looking at the price chart, you should be able to observe price consolidation. Comparing the size of the current daily bars with those in the past, it should be apparent that these bars are smaller than the historical ones. 
you want something that has had big moves in the past, which indicates that this stock's price does move, but now, the price action is comparatively quiet, due to smaller daily price moves. In consolidation mode, stocks also tend to have lower daily trading volumes, under these conditions, the options will normally be cheaper. You will often find this phenomenon close to the end point of a triangle, or wedge chart pattern, in your stock charts. 3. The options must be cheap. The implied volatility in the option prices must be less than the historical volatility of the underlying security. If your broker gives you a price chart with volatility view mode, then you can easily compare options implied volatility, with the stock historical volatility. If all the above conditions are in place, then you have an ideal setup for an option strangle trade. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe, to receive more great option trading strategies.